We are living in a three-dimensional universe. A one-dimensional object means it doesn't have any length, width, or height. The best example of a one-dimensional object is a singularity point, which has no measurable size or volume. Two-dimensional objects have length and width. Three-dimensional objects have length, width, and height. Three-dimensional objects can be seen in our everyday life, such as balls, humans, buildings, and, well, everything. But the concept of space-time tells us that the universe has four dimensions. Four-dimensional universe is the mathematical extension of our three-dimensional universe. With the dimension of time, our three-dimensional universe becomes four-dimensional. The concept of Einstein's space-time explains how time and the universe work. For now, it's the only best possible way to understand time. The speed of light is the leading actor in the relativity drama written by Einstein. Without the speed of light, relativity theory is nothing. So first, we start with a light bubble. Just switch on a light somewhere in three-dimensional space. The light will travel at a speed of light in all directions and create a bulb structure. And it will extend 300,000 kilometers per second. That means you can never reach or overtake the bubble because it is traveling at the maximum speed possible in our universe. If you want to try to reach the edge of the bubble, you can't. So basically, you are trapped in that bubble. Now we take a three-dimensional object, a cube. And if we want to reduce it into two-dimensional, we need to kick out its height. So two-dimensional version of the cube is a square. Similarly, sphere is a three-dimensional object, and its two-dimensional version is a circle. If we convert three-dimensional space into two dimensions, then we can see the flash of light traveling in the shape of a circle at the speed of light. For our purposes, it is better to visualize space as two-dimensional because it's easier to understand. If our light circle is to expand, it requires something important, which is time. Of course, without time, it can't expand. So we add time as an extra dimension, which is perpendicular to the space dimensions. This time accesses light's future timeline. Now we can see the light circle traveling frame by frame through time. This is called a future light cone, and nothing can escape from the light cone. If something wants to escape from the light cone, it would have to exceed the speed of light, which is impossible. With every tick of time, this cone expands at the speed of light. The cone's maximum angle is always at 45 degrees with respect to time, because given any amount of time, it will always travel a certain distance. This means that in one second, it will travel 300,000 kilometers, and in one year, it will travel one light year, or 9.5 trillion kilometers through space. Before moving on to the next step, we need to understand some basic coordinate systems. Assume you are stationary. We will draw a basic two-dimensional space diagram with the x, y axis. Your point is located at x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 4. So you are at the coordinates of 5, 4 in space. However, this coordinate is not a fixed one. It varies from perspective. From your friend's perspective who is in the at position at 0, 0, your position is 5, 4. But from the perspective of someone standing in a different location in space, your coordinates might be different from your friend's perspective. So your friend and some others get different coordinates of your position, even though you are not moving. Your position is the same for you, but not the same for all observers. This is called relativity, and position is relative. Now imagine person A, person B, and person C standing still. Consider the axes in kilometers. Here we will see positions from person A's perspective. So person A is at the coordinates of 0, 0, person B standing at coordinates 2, 0, and person 3 standing at coordinates 12, 0. From here, we can clearly see the distance between persons B and C is 10 kilometers. But if person A moves through space, his position will change. He can move or rotate his space grids, and so he will get different coordinate values of person B and C. However, the distance between B and C remains the same. So the distance between stationary objects in space doesn't change regardless of perspective. Distance is absolute for all observers. It means space is absolute. But what about relative motion? 
For example, you are standing stationary and your friend is in a moving train which travels at constant motion or constant velocity. Constant motion means no acceleration or deceleration, and no changes in direction. Simply traveling in a straight path at constant speed. From your perspective, you are stationary and your friend moves away 100 km per hour from you. But from your friend's perspective, he is at rest, and you are moving away from him at 100 km per hour. This happens because when an object is in constant motion, it doesn't feel any motion. If train windows are closed, he can't really feel whether he is in motion or not. This is called relative motion. All laws of physics are valid for both of you. Because both of you have your own frame of reference. And everything in the universe has its own frame of reference. Now we add extra dimension time into our diagram. If we add time into the space diagram, we will get a space-time diagram. Previous relative motion example can be easily explained by this space-time diagram. Here our space-time diagram consists of a space axis and a time axis. A stationary object in space is not moving through space, but is moving through time. This means that object is still in one location in space, but in various locations in time. If that object starts to move at a constant speed, the graph for that object will deflect from the original time axis. So you are at rest in space, but moving through time. In every time interval, you are not moving anywhere in space, but your friend is moving at constant velocity of 100 km per hour through space. Here, consider time intervals as hours. So in time 1, your friend will be 100 km away. In time 2, he will be 200 km away, and so on. If we mark your friend's position through space with a time axis, we're able to draw their journey line. You are at rest, and your friend travels at constant speed. Here your time axis is called the world line. But your friend also can claim to be at rest because he travels at constant velocity and has own frame of reference. Space-time diagrams allow us to change the frame of reference, or perspective. From your friend's perspective, you are moving away from him. So your friend can make a world line from his perspective. From his perspective, who can claim that I'm at rest? He follows a straight line through time. So you move away from him in space in given time intervals. Again, come into the train scenario. You are at rest. Your friend travels in the train. What will happen if he throws a ball? Now consider he throws a ball and it travels 20 kilometers per hour. So for your friend who is at rest and the ball travels 20 kilometers per hour. But from your perspective, who is stationary and watching that event, your friend is already traveling at 100 km per hour, and the ball is moving away from him at 20 km per hour. So, you can calculate the ball speed at 120 km per hour. Both of you get different answers of the ball speed. But both are right because speed is relative. Speed of an object will differ by frame of reference. This event can be explained by space-time diagrams. From your perspective, your friend travels at 100 km per hour, and the ball travels 120 km per hour. But if your friend rotates his space-time axis, you move away from him at 100 km per hour, and the balls travel from him 20 km per hour. From the ball's perspective, your friend is moving away from the ball at 20 km per hour, and you're moving away from the ball at 120 km per hour. So there is no confusion. The space-time diagram matches extremely well with our everyday life. Everyone has their own frame of reference and can rotate the space-time axis according to their perspective. You and your friend have the same time even moving through space. From this scene, we can clearly see space and time are absolute and non-changeable. But one special feature of the universe tells us all are wrong. That is the speed of light. Light travels at the speed of 300,000 km per second and is constant. The real problem is not about the speed of light, but the constant nature of the light. Speed of light is constant and is the same for all observers. It doesn't care whether the observer is stationary or in motion. We already know that speed is relative, but this doesn't apply when it comes to the speed of light. For example, you are traveling in a car at 100 km per hour, and your friend is driving a car towards you at 100 km per hour. Both of you would measure each other's car speed at 200 km per hour. Because your car speed is 100 km per hour, and your friend's car speed is also 100 km per hour. 
both driving towards each other. If an observer is standing by and not moving, they would measure the speed of each of your cars as 100 kilometers per hour. As we have already seen, speed is relative and it gives different speeds for different observers according to their motion. But think about the constant nature of the light. You are moving 30,000 kilometers per second towards the light beam. Here, light travels at 300,000 kilometers per second, and you travel 30,000 kilometers per second. The constant nature of the speed of light means you wouldn't measure the speed of light as 330,000 kilometers per second, but it would remain the same, 300,000 kilometers per second. Given all we know about relative motion, how can light speed be the same for all observers, even though they are in motion? If you are able to travel at light speed, you would travel along a light beam. You and the light beam travel at the same speed, so the light beam would freeze from your point of view because you and the light beam travel at the same speed. Is it possible? Einstein thought along these lines and came to realize it's totally wrong. He believed that Maxwell's equations were absolutely right and that those equations beautifully formulated that light is nothing but electromagnetic waves. No matter the observer's motion, the electromagnetic waves or light is always zipping away from the observer at 300,000 kilometers. Imagine you have a skateboard which is able to travel 200,000 kilometers. So now you decided to chase the light beam on your skateboard. Your friend has a laser light beam that you are ready to chase. He switches the light on and at the same time you start to chase. After one second, your friend measured the distance of the light beam, which has traveled 300,000 kilometers. And you travel 200,000 kilometers. But at the same time, you measure the light beam to have already traveled 300,000 kilometers away from you. So your actual travel distance is 200,000 kilometers from the starting point, And the light has traveled 300,000 kilometers away from you. So from your perspective, the total distance of light traveled is 500,000 kilometers. From your friend's perspective, the light beam traveled 300,000 kilometers in one second. And from your perspective, the light beam traveled a total of 500,000 kilometers in one second. This is weird, and at the same time amazing. How can the same light beam travel different distances in one second? If light always travels at the same speed, 300,000 kilometers per second, then how did it travel at the speed of 500,000 kilometers per second from your perspective? If space is absolute, how can light travel more distance in space? It seems like something is wrong. But nothing is wrong here. If we look at the space-time diagram, we can understand exactly how it works. Again, imagine you are traveling at constant velocity of 100,000 kilometers per second, and your friend is standing stationary. From your friend's perspective, you are traveling at 100,000 kilometers per second, and light travels at 300,000 kilometers per second, at a 45 degree angle. Nothing wrong here. But if you rotate your space time according to your perspective, your friend would move away from you at 100,000 kilometers per second, and the speed of light would be 200,000 kilometers per second. And we have already noted that light always travels at the same speed for all observers. So, for you as well, light must travel at the same speed. This means you can't rotate your space-time as normal. If we rotate space-time like this, the speed of light will decrease. This is not possible. So to maintain the same speed of light for all observers, we can't rotate space-time, but we need to stretch space-time. If we stretch space-time instead of the usual rotating, we can maintain the speed of light at the same rate. While trying to maintain the speed of light constant for all observers, not only space, but also time stretches or contracts. From this, we can clearly see that space and time are not the same for all. This sliding and stretching is called a Lorentz transformation. So space and time are not absolute, but relative. So your world line ticks slowly compared to a stationary observer because you are in motion. That means time slows down when an object is in motion. This phenomenon can't be felt in our everyday life because our movements are very, very slow compared to the speed of light. But tremendous changes occur when we travel near the speed of light. Everything in our universe is relative except the speed of light. To maintain the constant nature of the speed of light, space warps and time slows down, called special relativity theory. 
Special relativity describes an object with constant motion. But what about when it accelerates? This is where general relativity comes into play, what we call gravity. We will see this in detail in another video soon.